Hello and welcome to Aqua Rach. Today I am going to be doing another little illustration as part of my holiday art series. And just as the last couple of videos have been inspired by some of my favorite Christmas classics, this one will be as well. And this one is going to be a little illustration inspired by Frosty the Snowman, the little cartoon that used to air. Well, maybe it still does. I don't really watch TV anymore, but I used to watch this every Christmas and I just loved it. So I decided, well, first of all, I decided that I wanted to just kind of illustrate this in my own way, which I kind of found a challenge for this one just because that cartoon is so iconic and I almost just have those characters burned into my mind. So I decided to make this just a little bit whimsical, not really realistic, but also not overly cartoonish. And I wanted to capture that moment right when they put the hat on Frosty's head and then he comes to life. So I have drawn two children. They've just finished building Frosty and they've got him all decked out in a scarf and buttons and a carrot nose. And they're just about to put that hat on and they're totally unaware of what's going to happen next. So I think that that's just kind of a really nice magical moment from the story that I wanted to capture in my own way. And by the way, this template will be available to you for free. It is linked in the description below, just like all of my templates for this Christmas holiday series are. And that takes you over to my Gumrose, Gum Road page. I'm not really sure what Gumroad means. Anyway, it's a really cool site because they actually allow me to put downloadable templates on there for free, and I just kind of recently ran into that website. I have an Etsy store, and I was putting templates up there, but you can't put things in your Etsy store that you don't want to charge money for. So I really like Gumroad. I think it's a really cool site, um, and I think that that's really you know, people, I think, take for granted what kind of service that is because Gumroad isn't making any money if, you know, people aren't paying for things. So I know that some artists do charge money on there, but I just think it's really cool to be able to actually share files easily and not have to make a transaction out of it. Okay, so I have got my little sketch transferred over onto my watercolor paper. I do that the same way every time with my carbon paper. And today I am using India ink and my dip pen. I love using my dip pen. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit of effort and I have to be extra careful because knowing me, I would knock over that entire bottle of ink. It has not happened yet. But knock on wood, you know, that's something that I would do. And I would do it on camera and I would still put the video up because it would be kind of funny. Let's admit it. So I have everything outlined. And for this little illustration, I wanted my lines just to be kind of um, loose. And I didn't want everything to have to necessarily line up perfectly. Everything's a little bit sketchy. And I'm going to just add a little bit of texture in here, but I don't want to go overboard with any of the ink. I really want this to actually overall be a very simple illustration. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to continue working with my India ink, first of all, because there is a lot of white in this illustration. Obviously, the snowman is white. The foreground snow is going to be white. And I really wanted some way to put some contrast in here, but I didn't necessarily want to like paint a background. So I decided to just go with a solid black background. And what I'm going to do first is I'm using my India ink here, but I'm adding water into it to gray it down a little bit. And the reason that I'm doing that is just because it's going to help guide me when I go in with the undiluted the full power black ink because that ink 
is somewhat thicker, I guess. It's a little bit, the consistency is a little bit more thick than just like watercolor if you don't add any water into the ink. So it's a little bit trickier to work with, a little trickier to manipulate. So I find it easier if I want a really solid black area with ink, then I'll just kind of block everything in with a diluted version of the ink first because it just helps me see a little bit better when I'm using the full power black ink as I am here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and block in that whole background and again, I'm just kind of doing this for the sake of contrast and for the sake of simplicity, really, because I want this illustration just to have very few colors in it, but I didn't want it just to be really, really white all over. So I just decided to make the background black just for the purposes of contrast. And now I'm going to use some more diluted ink just to put some grays into the illustration. So decided to make the hat a little bit more gray. I'll make the boots on this child a little bit gray. And probably the boots on the other child. And that might be it for the grays that I need. And then the only colors that I plan to use for this illustration are just red and then kind of a bluish green. Oh, I guess I decided to do the little buttons in gray as well. And I put a little bit more ink up on his hat just to give it a little bit of form. So anyway, I want to keep the colors very, very simple for this illustration because really it is the little figures who are communicating what I want to say with this illustration. So color is kind of secondary, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of spot color. And the first color that I'm going to use is Purell Red, and I'll use this in a couple of different ways. I'll use it in a more intense, saturated way, and then in other areas, I'll dilute it a little bit so it's not so saturated. So first I'm kind of looking for areas that I do want to be a little bit more saturated. So the hat on the child on the left, and then some of the stripes on Frosty's scarf. And then probably the stripes on the other child's hat as well. Oh, and this child is wearing one of those snow suits, and I decided just to make it a very light red. So not really pink, I wouldn't say, but not as saturated as the red could be. And then a little uh, red on the hat for Frosty to make that stand out a little bit more. And then the only other area where I deviated from the red and green color was just the little carrot nose. So I just mixed up some orange really quick. And I'm being really loose with my brush strokes. I'm not even worrying about, you know, filling in the whole area in any precise way or even following the stripes in any precise way because I want this illustration, again, just to be a little bit sketchy and loose. Kind of childlike, you know? Now I'm mixing my green, so I'm just using my cobalt blue and then my Hansa yellow, but I definitely want to have more blue in here because I don't want this just to be straight red and green. I want it to be kind of a complementary color palette, but, you know, not fully, I guess. So it is technically a green because it has yellow in it, but it looks a little bit more like a bluish green. And I'm not going to use this color quite as much as I used the red. So I'm just going to add some really light bluish green stripes to the scarf, and I'll probably make the little fuzzy things on Frosty's scarf this color as well, just keep it really light just so there's a little bit of contrast between those fluffy things and the snow on Frosty. Now I'm getting a little more blue and just kind of adding a little bit more contrast to this coat over here. I didn't want to go overboard with it though because I didn't really do that with any of the other areas. 
And then I'm just adding a tiny bit of contrast to the little fluffy things on Frosty's scarf as well and painting this child's mittens bluish green. And I believe that that is all that I did for the color because I, again, wanted just to keep it very whimsical. And then since I covered Frosty's stick arms with the black ink, I'm just using my white gel pen just to put those back in. And I think that looks kind of cool. I like it. My dogs like it too. They're dreaming about it and snoring all over the place. Now I'm just using this to add a little fluff to that child's hat. And kind of looking for other areas where I can use the white pen, but I didn't really see anything. Now this was kind of a spur of the moment decision. It just kind of popped into my head. I decided that I wanted to write, may all your Christmases be frosty. So I didn't make out a template for this. I'm just trying my best to use my handwriting skills from third grade. And yeah, <laughs> I think it turned out okay, but I definitely am not like a handwriting person. In fact, my actual regular handwriting is atrocious. So pretty proud of that. I like it and then I'm getting my ink back out so I can just ink that in and I don't erase the pencil lines in the video simply because this was kind of the last thing that I did for this project and I, you know, have a tendency to want to rush things just for the sake of getting them on video and it was actually late at night so I decided to play it safe and just let the ink really dry overnight and I will erase those pencil lines in the morning. There's really no real reason to rush and then ruin this illustration, which I like very much. So sometimes patience is difficult, but worth it. And in the template, I will include everything that you see here and you can feel free to use it as you wish. You can play around with the colors. You may not want to do the black background. You may want to kind of do something different with this, but the template will be yours to play with, and I hope that you really enjoy this little project. I think this is just one of those things that gets passed down from generation to generation, and that's what makes it so special. And so even though the characters that I drew are different from the originals, I feel like that same sentiment really shines through. And that's what I was really going for. So now I get to remove the tape. And by the way, I didn't put tape along the bottom border just because I knew I wasn't going to be even painting down there. So yeah, this is it. And it was really fun to work on. This actually was my second try doing this. I tried some different things with the background before that I ended up really not liking. So I think that this turned out a lot better. It's much simpler and it still just really gets the point across that I wanted to get. Just kind of that little magical moment. Again, I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I really am enjoying making all of these videos. And I would love it if you left me a comment and downloaded this free template. And uh, if you have Instagram, tag me at AquaRach on Instagram. Thank you.